Shree Miller says she has nothing to do, had nothing to do with her husband's murder. A jury thought otherwise and sentenced her to life in prison. We are updating a forensic file episode with facts that have come to light since that show aired. I'm back with Sarah, Vanessa, Troy, and Kevin, the lead investigator in the case with us. Also on the phone, I have David Nicola. He was Sheree's attorney. And Sarah, you wanted to ask David a question. Yeah, David, my question is, I understand there was a handwritten note found on Sheree's computer desk with a misspelling of somebody's name, O'Connor, O'Connell, something like that, and a phone number. And, and, and it was pretty damning that they were able to match that same name misspelled on one of the instant messages on AOL. Was that, how significant was that in the case? Well, it was significant because uh, here's uh, Jerry playing detective at one point when it comes to setting her up, uh, but not the other. He contacted her, she testified, he called and said, this person, write this name down. This is the person you need to call if I get in trouble or something or something comes up down here. He'd been arrested down there, he had troubles with alcohol and drugs. He's living in a, a family member's basement and he was getting put out. It, in the instant message, that was message as well, right? But he put that together after the fact, so that was a nice little setup for him there. Again, setting her up, but he never says, and don't tell me he might have dispo disposed of the shotgun and whatnot. He knows where he disposed of it. He at least say, I did this. Any detective would say that if they actually did it. Kevin, what do you say to that? I say that that's, I call it BS on that. It, the <laughs> number was found to match the instant message. If she would have received it in a phone call, she wouldn't have been able to misspell the name wrong. She wouldn't have been able to write the numbers in the exact format wrong. It was a one in two twin, quintillion chance that that would have occurred. That's 19 zeros behind the number two. Now listen, <laughs> I'm gonna show you how Cherie described her marriage to her husband. Now Kevin says this was sort of typical behavior with many folks in the community, but here's what she said about herself and her husband on NBC. What kind of a relationship did you and Bruce have? What, what sort of a marriage was it? Wild. Was it wild? Spontaneous. <laughs> we could do it kind of like naughty at night, good in the daytime, I don't know, you know, like, I'm Mary Kay consultant and mom and all that and business owner in the daytime and oh, we did wild things at night. That was us. They made us happy. At, at, at best, Kevin, you'd say she was compartmentalized because she goes, oh, people just chat and they have sex when they chat. They, they, you know, sexed each other. And what's up with that? No big deal. But you say it got a lot worse than just that. Yeah, she, she formed relationships with ex-boyfriends, girlfriends, with people that were in her life for period, she kept relationships going. She formed relationships with the Cassidy family after Jerry committed suicide. Um, she just had to have everyone uh, available to her at her whim to manipulate. David, I'm gonna give you some last words here, go ahead. Well, it's easy to say that, but in reality, we're talking 1999, the jury convicted her on her morality, not the facts. And during this current day and age, we have cheating websites that are billion dollar industries, if she had this trial today, what we know about the psychosis that people have, as you know, Dr. Drew, the problems that people have, she would have been found not guilty. So it would have been all sex addiction, guys. Was that the defense you would have used, Troy? You know, maybe, but, uh, you know, he's saying, oh, the jury convicted him on, on, on her, uh, convicted her on morality. No, jurors really try hard on to get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, they spend a lot of time. He said that they were crying, that they're spending all this time. I know in what the it is. Room. It's the lead in the water in Flint. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. The government's fault. That's what it is. Already. All right, guys, thank you very much. Thank you, David and Kevin, for joining us. I appreciate it. Next up, the woman who slept with Hulk Hogan on that sex tape is taking the stand. You'll see it after this.